untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Blue Black Mill, a deck whose goal is pretty simple, reduce the opponent's library down to zero cards, so as soon as our opponent draws from an empty library, we win the game. And Phyrexia added Jace to the deck, can be played for 3 mana and 2 life, or 4 mana, in which case it enters with a full 5 loyalty. If we cast it for the completed cost, it only will start with 3 loyalty. Then the plus 1 can shrink an opposing creature down, giving it minus 3 minus 0 until our next turn. Then the minus 2 can mill a player for 3, and then if any graveyard has 20 or more cards in it, we draw 3 cards, otherwise we draw 1. And in a deck that's actively milling the opponent, we can actually pull off the draw 3 with Jace quite often. And then the minus X says target player player mills 3 times X cards, so if we play Jace for 4 mana we can immediately mill for 15, which can sometimes be enough to close out the game. And then the rest of our deck has a couple more mill engines. We've got 4 copies of a Ruin Cramp, which will mill the opponent for 3 if we enable Landfall, and that's also the reason why we're playing 4 copies of Fabled Passage, to potentially enable Landfall twice with our Cramp. And then we're also playing 4 copies of Mesmeric Orb, one of the retro artifacts from the Brothers War, saying whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that permanent's controller mills a card. So this is symmetrical, but it's actually an advantage, as we'll see in a second, but we're more interested in milling the opponent with it whenever they untap a land, whenever they untap a creature, Mesmeric Orb will mill them, so this can repeatedly mill an opponent over time. And then we've got a bunch of one-shot mill effects as well, including Glimpse, which is the most efficient one, 2 mana to mill for 10, then there's Cacophony, which mills for 8, can also potentially be kicked, but doesn't come up very often. And then at 3 mana, doesn't technically mill since it exiles, but Hideous Laughter will make the opponent exile cards from the top of their library until that player has exiled cards with total mana value 20 or more. And in a format as fast as Historic, with a very low curve and a ton of 1-drops, Hideous Laughter can be incredibly effective, sometimes exiling over 20 cards. And then I'm also playing four copies of Founding the Third Path, which is a read ahead saga, so we can start from any chapter. On the first one, we get to cast an instant or sorcery with mana value one or two from our hand without paying its mana cost. So that's a nice way to get a bit of a discount. Cast maybe a glimpse or a cacophony for free is always nice. And then on the second chapter, we mill for four. And on the final chapter, we can exile an instant or sorcery from our graveyard, copy it, and cast the copy. So that's a way to potentially replay something like glimpse or even hideous laughter from our graveyard to help close out the game. And then Founding can get back some of our removal spells as well, and there's quite a few of those in the deck now, since this is a much more controlling approach to the mill deck as opposed to the one I featured a few months ago, since now with the recent additions of Mesmeric Orb and Jace, we want to be able to prolong the game as much as possible to get the most out of them. So we've got a full set of Fatal Push, can even enable Revolt thanks to Fabled Passage, which is quite useful. We've got two copies of Cutdown as more cheap spot removal, and then at four mana the full set of a Drown, which can be used as a removal spell or a counter spell, as long as the opponent has enough cards in their graveyard to enable it. And then at 4 mana, 2 copies of a Ritual of Soot, which will destroy all creatures with mana value 3 or less, playing this over some of the other options, since it can also take care of some 4-4 tokens from the Foundry, for instance. And now with the Equipment deck, we might be facing some very large creatures that don't die to cards like Languish, so I've been liking Ritual of Soot as my 4 mana sweeper. And then because we're playing Mesmeric Orb, which also mills us, we can potentially mill some of these removal spells and mill spells to then get back with our Founding, so there's a bit of synergy there too. And then at least one copy of Cling to Dust to exile problematic cards from the opponent's graveyard. And because we're milling ourselves with Mesmeric Orb, it's very easy to enable the escape on Cling to Dust to cast it over and over again, so it can be a nice card draw engine in the more grindy matchups as well. And then a mana base, besides having Fabled Passage to enable our Ruin Crab, also has two copies of Ibnu Rivulet, which can be sacrificed to mill for four, so that can also come in handy. The drawback is that it costs us one life to tap it for blue mana. Also need to make sure we have enough basic lands to search up with Fabled Passage, since we may end up milling a few with Mesmeric Orb, so I'm still playing at two Swamps and three Islands, so that's also why I'm not playing the full set of Rivulet. Also need quite a few dual lands for mana fixing, since our deck sometimes needs to operate on a low land count, so that's why we we have the full set of Watery Grave, four Dark Slick Shores, another recent addition that's very useful in the deck, and three of the Blue Black Pathway, and then a room for one Channel Land as well for added interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems keepable. Good mix of mill effects and interaction. And then I could fetch on turn one, or I could keep Fabled Passage in case we find a crab. And a close call. I think I'll fetch 
since we might want to curve 2 drop into 3 drop. Up against some sort of Jeskai deck. Okay, there's our crab. Still getting a Mesmeric Orb in play is a pretty high priority for points on a more controlling build. Could also Founding, but there's no spell I want to cast for free. So, play the Orb while we can hopefully resolve it. And then next turn we could go Crab, Land, and then still Founding. Opponent is indeed on Jeskai Control. So 3 mana, they could have the Archmage's Charm. Which can also steal our Cramp for what it's worth. But uh, let's find out. Okay, I think I just keep up Drown now. Opponent doing nothing, end of turn. And a Divine Purge we will counter. Would also exile the orb. Hope to pick up a land. Perfect. So now I could founding. That way if they do purge again I can at least replay it as well. Could also hideous laughter. It's not going to be at its best in this matchup. Since our opponent's got some expensive cards. And that also leaves up cling to dust. So, founding we would start from chapter 2, and then be able to get back a mill spell on the following turn. I think going for Hades Laughter plus Kling is fine. And there we see the Archmage's Charm, put on a build with Karn, and Memory Deluge. So there are a few cards I wouldn't mind potentially exiling with Cling to Dust, like a Deluge, but don't have to do it right now. Okay, there's another Djinn, which they can potentially bring back. Bonus also showing that they have answers to artifacts with Prismari Command, and yeah, there it is. So in response we can cling, get rid of Deluge, so we can draw. And a Drown will be useful later. They could still finish off the Cramp here as well. And a March will exile it. Okay, so we've got our work cut out for us here. Ritual of Soot not going to be great in this matchup, neither is cut down. So start from chapter 2, mill them for 4, 21 cards remaining, 20 now, and Drown at least can counter a big powerful play. And then next turn we can get back another mill spell from our graveyard perhaps. It's gonna be March for 2, pitching a card to keep up whatever they have in hand. I guess what they pitched, maybe not great in the matchup, Wrath of God. I think we let this go, since they might have sandbagged the Teferi, which could also be a problem if they resolve it. Now, probably hang on to Shores until after we play another Crab, and then we can escape Cling to Dust in the meantime, if we don't need to drown. Okay, was a Wandering Emperor left over. That we can keep in check with our Spot Removal. So I don't think I need to counter it. I hope you're ready to lose. So if they put a plus one counter on it, we'll just cut down. If not, we can wait to Ritual of Soot's both tokens. Keep watch for it. And take two. Still wanna exile a non-creature spell here. And not sure if it matters. And then we want to keep spells in the graveyard that we can potentially replay with our Saga. Alright, so we can Ritual, play a Tap Land. Plenty of lands left for the Crab.
opponent just plussing Emperor. They picked up a castle, which can also come in handy. And a glimpse. Okay, so glimpse, opponent down to seven cards. Still have our counter spell as protection. And opponent's gonna try to counter, we'll counter back. I think that's worth it. And then now we'll just play another tap land. So seven cards remaining. Still at 16. And their only pressure is Emperor and a castle. So feeling hopeful. We must protect the people. Can kill the token end of turn. And still have our Cling to Dust, which is proving to be quite useful. So can easily escape it and see what we pick up. And get rid of maybe an Archmage's Charm. Alright, just another land. Play one tapped. Wishing we had a couple deserts in our mana base right now. Haven't drawn any of those. Five cards remaining. Soaring City can bounce a token. Four cards left. May your blade strike true. Our opponent may have picked up some counter spells in the meantime as well. Hideous Laughter is a must counter. Well, might as well uh, give it a shot. Oh, well, that seemed to have worked. Alright, GG's. Close one here against uh, Jeskai Control Deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's pretty light on interaction. This is probably not quite good enough. Okay, once again, no real interaction, but probably can't afford to mulligan. And then one founding can go keep three lands, which can also fuel our crab. Opponent on a life gain deck. Don't think we need to fatal push the veteran. So do we want to play crab on turn one or hold it? So we don't expose it to an opposing portable hole. If I play Crab on 1, I can Founding on 2. And that can maybe read ahead, cast Fatal Push. So I think I'm still Crabbing. So it looks like Green-White Angels. Keep a Fatal Push. Okay, maybe it is more of a Heliot life gain combo deck. Instead of an angel one. Yeah, there's Heliod. So if they have a Scurry Oak, they could combo off. I do have Fabled Passage to potentially enable Revolt on Fatal Push. So as opposed to killing the Veteran, I think I still hold Fatal Push for Scurry Oak. Which is a more unique combo piece. Another Fabled Passage is useful. So I'm not gonna sacrifice it yet. Just pass. So we're also in Collected Company territory. There's a Scurry Oak, so opponent does have the infinite combo. But we're gonna make sure to break that up. Could also kill the Veteran, but again, might as well deal with a bigger threat. Which is Scurry Oak. Could have also waited for the plus one counter from Helio to target the Scurry Oak and then kill it in response. Don't think it matters too much. Could Founding get back Fatal Push, but that's kind of desperate. So I think we just uh, hope they don't have another Scurry Oak in hand. Can hit his Laughter and then keep up Fabled Passage. Still no Scurry Oak exiled, so there's a good chance they have another one in hand. But at least Fatal Passage represents another Fatal Push. 
Although I'm not sure our opponent's going to play around another one. Right, it's going to be a collected company. That could hit a scurry oak out of nowhere. Do we feel lucky and want to mill in response? I think we just wait. Alright, no scurry oak. They did find a skyclave to exile ruin crab. So we'll mill in response. And there's a scurry oak. So had we fetched first, we would have died to the infinite combo of making infinite squirrels and infinite life gain. Opponent's got 13 cards remaining. So next turn we could founding and go straight to hideous laughter. Since we're at 10 here. Glimpse. Yeah, glimpse plus founding should do it. Just mill for four. So yeah, razor thin margins in this matchup. But that does it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a keeper. Crab into Mesmeric Orb. It's one of our better starts. And then I think I just take two of Watery Grave. Instead of taking damage of Rivulet repeatedly. Opponent Mono Green, maybe an Elf deck without a one drop. Turn to Clan Caller. Alright, this could be a tough matchup. Cutdown was a good draw. But uh, Mesmeric Orb should be quite effective at least. And then I want to keep cut down for the three mana lords if possible, although with the Clan Caller in play, giving them plus one plus one, that may not work out. And then Drown also good to counter a company perhaps. Shepherd making green spells uncounterable, so we'll have to cut down Shepherd if we want to enable Drown. Okay, Founding was a decent pickup as well. Second so Founding, and then that can cast a free cut down or a free Drown, and then still cut down. Maybe give up on Drown as a counter spell, and just kill some of their creatures. Or I can just cut down the Shepherd now and keep up Drown. That may be safer. Okay, Arch Druids. We can either counter or kill. And take one. Opponent's not even gonna bother since that would mean milling more with Mesmeric Orb. Maybe there was a reason not to kill the Archdruid until after they attacked, so they actually would have milled for more. Either way, we can founding mill for four, play another orb, and a fabled passage will mill for six. So that's a good amount. Still have our rivulet we can activate. And the elf deck is going to struggle with double mesmeric orb, since they tend to play a lot of permanents that need to tap. We can also have a look at our graveyard. There's a ritual of suit which we can potentially replay next turn if uh, the board calls for it. So for now, 23 cards remaining. Visionary, we don't mind. And a lookout. Also a 1-1 one -one that essentially draws a card. So, we'll see what's in our graveyard, but I don't mind the idea of just casting a Ritual of Soot here. Alternative, maybe go for Hideous Laughter, and then I can still Founding. And then, pretty sure we just mill the opponent out. Since we also get to play a land for Crab. 
If we go for a ritual, then we would kill Crab before playing our land. Could have saved myself one damage, but opponent's at two. So this should do it. Awesome. So a quick mill here against Mono Green Elves. With the help of Mesmeric Orb. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and I think we've got a keeper. No removal is the only concern, but plenty of ways to mill. And between Cramp and Jace, we can also potentially block some smaller creatures or shrink them down. Okay, opponent with a Songmat Treachery, so this could be a Charbelcher deck. Okay, so that's quite scary. Probably no downside in playing the Cramp now. Since I don't expect it to be removed, maybe a Strangle can take care of it gonna be a looting. So opponent can potentially kill us on turn three even if they can generate a treasure token early on. Turn four more realistic with an iron crack feat into Charbelcher activate. And Hideous Laughter is not gonna be great since they have a lot of spells that also function as lands with a relatively high mana value. So I'll glimpse here. And we can see some of their cards. They're also playing Pact of Negation. One Charbelcher gone. They're on the Creativity build. So probably better off going for Jace next turn. Hope to pick up our counter spell. That would be ideal. Drown as a way to counter the opponent's spells. Just another Hideous Laughter. So... Yeah, I don't feel great about Hideous Laughter. Again, average mana value is pretty high in their deck. So I think Jace. And then... Do we plus, do we minus is also an interesting question. Next turn, I can Fable Passage Mill for 6, plus play another Hideous Laughter. If I plus Jace, I can maybe minus X for a bunch in the future. Or I can just hit his laughter anyway, and then play Jace with higher loyalty, which may be better after all. So we'll try this. Upside of Jace, if we draw, is that we can maybe draw into a counterspell. But yeah, that didn't mill very many cards. And looks like we are dead to the combo here. Iron Crank Feet into Charbelcher. There it is. Assuming they have enough cards left in library to actually kill us with a Charbelcher, which we got kind of close to potentially surviving it. But 25 cards remaining means 25 damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck, so having a Cling to Dust could be useful after we mill them for a bunch. For now, I think we've got a Keeper, Double Mesmeric Orb, can do a lot of heavy lifting. And then we've got a little bit of interaction, at least, with Drown. So we'll start by fetching an Island. Okay, it looks like some sort of artifact deck. And Hope of Girapur is quite effective against us. Still gonna get an orb in play first. As per Sentinel, also something we would prefer to avoid. Okay, and soul artifacts. That's fine. Can still kill their creature with Drown next turn. And I should do it before they get a chance to untap. So that bought us quite a bit of time. Citadel, a lot scarier if they enchant it with another Unsoul. And a Volt Scourge. And the Meta Tact. 
So that can provide card advantage if an artifact hits us. Hoping to hit some more land drops to build up towards Ritual of Soot. For now, Orb versus another Glimpse. Probably get more mileage out of another Orb. Could have also gone for Cling to Dust in the hopes of hitting a land drop. Try that next turn. Okay, Reign of Truth. At least not too many artifacts in play here. Still hits us for five. And Metal Attack goes digging. Another Hideous Laughter. So is there any point in casting Cling to Dust? Next turn we're gonna mill the opponent for eight with double orb. So they'll be at 32, Glimpse 22, if we survive another turn, Glimpse again, 12. So we're not quite gonna get there in time. So I may need to cling to dusts in hopes of being able to hit his laughter, ideally also Glimpse this turn after drawing a blue source. Let's give it a shot. And then we need to exile a non-creature, so another Reign of Truth. Alright, it's gonna cost me two life, but it's probably worth it. And then now there's a chance we can Ritual of Soot next turn as well. If we're not dead. Twenty-one cards remaining. And we're taking at least five here. Lurus in hand, so that's okay. So it looks like we'll get another turn. Opponent's gonna get milled for 10 next turn with double mesmeric orb before they even attack. And now it's gonna be four more. So, pretty good shot of milling them with a hideous laughter now. Their curve seems quite low. Even if we draw a land for Ritual of Soot, it's not necessarily good enough, since our opponent can play Lurus and then replay and Soul Artifact on the Darksteel Citadel if they also have a land and attack for 5. So yeah, I don't think uh, Ritual is the way to go. So instead, Hideous Laughter, probably more likely to get there as opposed to Glimpse. And yeah, one card remaining. So unless they can kill me at instant speed here in their upkeep. This should get there. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, hand seems decent. Double Fabled Passage to go with the Rune Cramps, it's important that we keep it alive. And then cut down for a bit of interaction, facing Merfolk. Okay, so don't expect any removal for the Crab. So we can run it out on turn one. I could play Watery Grave. The one downside of Watery Grave is that it gives us an island to enable island walk for the opponents. But by going Watery Grave, Rune Crab, next turn I can potentially Fabled Passage cut down. Although I'm still probably more likely to just play Mesmeric Orb or Glimpse. So, yeah, I guess we can just play Pathway for now. Okay, there's Master of the Pearl Trident, so that's the island walk I was talking about. So now we can cut it down. Just gonna watery grave, and then we wanna kill the master now, since our opponent is playing the Lord that can counter non-creature spells. And that would also just give the master plus one plus one, so it doesn't die to cut down anymore. Silvergill's fine. Revealing Speaker, so they are going wide here. Don't have a Ritual of Soot available. But it looks like Rune Crab can at least block the Shoreline Scout for now. Okay, Founding was nice. So Fable Passage, Founding, cast a free Glimpse. We'll get a Swamp. Could 
could also keep a push to kill a lord, so we don't take as much damage. But it's not quite as mana efficient here. Although next turn I could both Founding and Orb. So maybe I still see the advantage of keeping a push. In which case I shouldn't have cracked Fabled Passage in case we need to kill a 3 mana Lord to enable Revolt on Fatal Push. So they can probably flash in the 2 mana Lord. Which I can Fatal Push and then they can counter by sacrificing 2 Merfolk. Which I guess is fine by me. That's going to be Collected Company instead. So that could find multiple Lords. Alright, just finds their God. That's fine, so... Kill Silvergill. And pay the Ward. Alright, so that worked out. And then now it's time for Mesmeric Orb. Founding plus Glimpse. There's also an argument for just starting from Chapter 2, since we have uh, plenty of spells to replay. Although I kind of want to replay Glimpse on Chapter 3, which would not have worked if we started from Chapter 2. This opponent's got 16 cards remaining, so I still need to survive for a few turns. The Crab has served us well. An opponent with a shortage of lords. Still have to watch out for Island Walk at any point. Opponent hit another collected company, ouch. That could be game over here. Okay, they hit double Hexcatcher, which can also counter our non-creature spells. So that's bad news. We're taking 13 exactly, so I have to chum block. Yeah, that was a good hit of the draw from their god. Collected company. So your opponent's gonna mill for five, six, seven, eight next turn. And there's a Jace. Get to mill for four more. So do we actually get there? Nine, five, six, seven, eight. So they're gonna have one card remaining. So if I didn't have to jump with a cramp, we would have gotten there. So I'm not even allowed to play Jace, because then our opponent can counter it with a Hexcatcher, sacking some tapped Merfolk, and then the orb is not gonna mill them for as much. So I think that my only hope is to just pass a turn, opponent will mill for 8, draw, have an empty library, and then attacks all out with their god, which will then draw a card, losing them the game. Well, good game either way. Opponent attacks and goes all out and draws with their god and loses. Wow, what a close one here against Merfolk. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, up against a Gigantha deck. Our hand seems decent. Can keep up Fatal Push if we'd like. And that may be worth it. And then turn to either Glimpse or Orb. And then we'll have Drown us more cheap interaction. Okay, Symmetry Sage, so... Blue Red Wizards, happy to take that out. And a Ruin Cramp seems slightly better than Orb. While well, we have a land to go with it. Milling the opponent has some disadvantages, as we see cards like Reckless Rage and the opponent may be playing with a Dreadhorde Arcanist as well. Belmore. Okay, so... Probably go for Hideous Laughter as a more mana efficient play, wait on Orb until there's more permanents that tap. Could also keep up Drown to potentially kill an Arcanist before they give it haste with another charge. But uh, this seems like the more mana efficient play for now, in case we pick up another land. And Hideous Laughter is going to be good against the wizard deck, a very low curve. And we see two more charges exiled, so they at most have one left in hand to go with an Arcanist. So 16 cards remaining means Glimpse and Orb 
especially with a land from Cramp, could just be lethal. Although they may take out the Cramp before it untaps again. Alright, so Discharge kills Cramp. That's fine. And I consider... Opponent mills the card, so only 14 left now. And a Founding. So if I Founding cast Glimpse, then next turn by milling 4 we get there. So at 13 I feel relatively safe. Could also Founding and then just cast Drown now, killing Balmore, and then next turn we can just cast a Glimpse and that should do it. Yeah, that's the safest line. So next turn, mill for 4, mill for 10, and that should be game. They could still potentially cast some burn spells in their upkeep. But uh, at 13, unless they reckless charge now to hit us for a bunch, we should be in the clear. Now let's cast a free glimpse. Alright, GG's. And there's a last reckless charge. Can have a quick glimpse at the deck if we wanted to. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. And we've got a pretty balanced hand. Wouldn't mind drawing a few extra lands. To enable Ruin Crab, get to hit his laughter and ritual. Bone blue black, looks like a rogue deck. Okay, so Ruin Crab may not survive. If I hold it until next turn, it could also get countered by an opposing drown. So I think I just play crab on one. And then if they want to fatal push it, that's okay. May throw off their curve a bit. It's going to be a Soaring Thought Thief, that's fine. So now next turn I could play a land and then Drown Killing Thief. As opposed to going for more mill effects, just gotta keep the board under control a little bit. Could also keep up Drown at instant speed, but that runs into opposing counter spells. Do have a Ritual, but I'm not very confident that it's going to resolve. So we'll see how it uh, plays out if we take a more controlling approach. Opponent has to push for Crab. At least get to mill three cards and enable Drown for us last turn. And then go for Hideous Laughter probably. Hope there's no Spell Pierce. And yeah, opponent's curve is incredibly low, so we exiled a ton of cards here. Get to see a bit more of the opponent's deck. Cure Obsession, Cheap Removal, Lofty Denial as a counter spell. So now the shields may be up. Opponent's got 21 cards remaining. A Rune Cramp's not bad, although I don't have a land to go with it. Although it may bait out a counter spell, who knows. Alright, they let it resolve. And then just go for Glimpse. And they may counter this one. Alright, Drown to counter makes sense. So the game goes on. Opponent still on two lanes. So they have all spells in hand. And time for a Curious Obsession now. Don't really mind my opponent drawing more cards, necessarily. Not quite jumping with the Crab either. And they found another land, that's scary, because now they could have another counter in hand. Okay, so I think now we're on the plan of passing and potentially drowning something at instant speed. And I haven't decided yet what that's going to be. 
Might want to set an upkeep stop. Uh, Fairy Vandal. So that is a rogue, so that's going to mill me with Enforcer. So maybe I kill Enforcer, although I could chump it with a crab, which at this point may be okay. So chump Enforcer with crab, kill Wind Robber before they get a chance to untap with it. And then Fairy Vandal doesn't hit too hard, we can maybe Ritual of Soot after chumping the Enforcer. And they can sack Wind Robber in response to draw. Okay. So while our opponent is potentially capable of milling us, it's the damage that's more threatening. We'll jump and then we'll have to see if our opponent commits more to the board or if they're keeping up interaction. Thought Thief. Mills and pumps Vandal, but now may be able to resolve a ritual. One card left. Yeah, it's a close call. Opponent's got 17 cards remaining. There's a chance Hideous Laughter is lethal, although I feel like we got pretty lucky with the first one. So it's not guaranteed to quite get there if they have a bunch more two drops left. Or we can just take two. Down to three, Ritual, hope there's no Counterspell left as their last card. Wipe the board, and that buys us enough time to mill them out next turn. I think we go for Ritual. And a Drown was their last one. Alright, so that was going to get us either way. GG's. Yeah, things could have gone slightly differently, and we might have been able to get there in time. But uh, yeah, cheap counter spells is quite effective against us. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Gigantha deck, and our hand seems keepable. If this is Wizards, we have double Fatal Push, Drown for more interaction, and then Hideous Laughter to start milling. Hopefully find some more of our mill engines, like Orb and Crab. For now, keep up Fatal Push. Okay, opponent's blue-white instead. And the Defector Mites, I'm happy to take out. Okay, there's Orb. That's a good draw. Mill for one. And see that they're a blue-white artifact deck. Metallic Rebuke, who gets to know about as well. Sentinel will gladly take out as well. And Portable Hole, that's too bad. Exiles or Orb. Okay. Just uh, push Sentinel. Pay the tax. And a Reign of Truth on an empty board. So... Opponent cannot cast Metallic Rebuke, so we'll Hideous Laughter, keep Fabled Passage for a potential Crab. Not the most effective Hideous Laughter, because our opponent's playing Thought Monitor with mana value 7. So that uh, nerfs our Hideous Laughter quite a bit. Foundry can turn Thopters into 4-4 tokens. Picked up a glimpse. So now they could potentially Metallic Rebuke. If I play Passage, I can pay for it. But we don't have to sacrifice it yet. So mill 10 more. Still 28 cards remaining, so... We're going to need some help off the top here. Opponent makes a servo, which they can upgrade into a Thopter and then a 4-4 Construct. Reign of Truth transforms. Now a 4-4, so that also hits pretty hard. Take the one. I think we keep up Drown since we also don't want to run into a Metallic Rebuke. The rivulets probably can hang on to, so we'll pass. And then, if they use Foundry, we'll respond with Drown Killing Portrait, I think. Not loving my spot. That portable hole on Mesmeric Orb making a pretty huge difference. Okay, opponent makes another token. 
And there's a 2 mana Thought Monitor to draw to. This just a Construct, not a Thopter at least. Okay, Founding was decent. So it can start from Chapter 2, or we can go straight to Chapter 3 to replay Hideous Laughter or Glimpse. In case we fear another portable hole, which is not super unlikely at this point. So yeah, I think we Founding replay Hideous Laughter. Which I'm still hoping is better than Glimpse. Alright, that one was a bit better. Six cards left. So, Rivulet mills for four. So we're almost there. As we take five. And another Foundry. So it's going to come down to the wire. So cards the opponent could have, more portable holes, Metallic Rebuke, Soaring City as well. And a Ritual. That one's unlikely to resolve, should I cast it anyway. Because Rivulet doesn't win me the game right now, and then maybe Ritual of Soot buys me an extra turn as well. Even though it's likely to get countered. Right, that actually worked. Fair enough. So now we're more likely to survive another attack. And then opponent draws down to four cards. Mill with rivulets, and that should be game. Take four. All right, GG's. Another thought monitor. Opponent's just digging at this point. They maybe should have just cast it before attacking in the hopes of finding a Reign of Truth or something. Alright, so we got to see our blue-black mill deck in action, and didn't get to see as much of a Jace as I would have liked, but in testing it's been quite good for me. Getting to control the board a little bit in the grindier matchups and potentially drawing three as well can be quite nice. So one of our better tools in the control matchups as well, since answers to Planeswalkers are not very common. And then we can also potentially just use the minus X to close out the game. And then I've been very impressed by founding, getting to cast spells for free, and then getting back another mill spell from the graveyard. So that's been a great addition for the deck as well. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.